Podcast. Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today we're diving back into our series dedicated to foods from TV and film, with a long overdue shot at the steamed baozi buns from the Pixar short film Bao. Okay, so for those following along with this series, we have now done many different forms of bao buns that come from Chinese cuisine, including our tossy baos, rosong baos, sweet custard baos, cocktail baos, the list goes on because I'm on a personal mission to make every single one of these in existence. This, however, will be our first steamed bun attempt on this channel for a very good reason because steamed buns are deceptively tricky to get right. For those unfamiliar, a baozi, or more colloquially simply bao, is a yeasted dough filled with a savory ground pork filling, then steamed to achieve its final rise. We're going to be using a few pantry sauces that primarily borrow from our Xianbing stuffed pancake recipe to create our filling, including some dark soy sauce, oyster sauce, and spicy bean paste. By far the trickiest obstacle today though will be how to properly proof and steam our buns because if you don't steam these things properly, their volume will completely collapse into a sad deflated bun. Womp. Finally, just because this Domi Shi short is so perfectly animated, I also thought I'd use this as an opportunity to take a look at a couple very small but accurate details in the animation of this film that can actually be really informative in your own bow making. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so up first, we're kicking things off with our bow dough since this is going to need a fairly long proof time today. Going into my largest mixing bowl here is one tablespoon or a single packet of dry active yeast, followed by one and a half cups of warm water. Then next we're adding in a single tablespoon of sugar and two tablespoons of sesame oil to give our yeast culture something to feed on. Then we're going to let that yeast proof for 10 minutes, at the end of which we should start seeing some nice bubbles forming, confirming that our yeast is alive and well. Then next I'm gradually adding in about 4 cups of AP flour, a half cup at a time. Now, when I say about 4 cups, we're approximating here because the hydration of your dough can vary depending on a lot of variables, not to mention that cup measurements are notoriously inaccurate. I think for my own attempt here, I ended up using about four and a half cups of AP flour, but more importantly, what we're looking for here is a nice cohesive dough to start forming, which should pull away from the sides of the bowl once properly kneaded, like so. We're covering this in plastic wrap, then setting it aside to proof in the oven with the oven light on for two hours. In the meantime, while our dough proofs, I'm getting to work on my filling next, which as I mentioned earlier, is going to look pretty similar to the filling that we did in our Xianbing stuffed pancake recipe a while back, because its dark soy sauce marinade and aromatic five spice and bok choy elements are going to pair really nicely with our steamed bun dough. Kicking things off here first is 4 cloves of crushed and minced garlic, followed by 1 inch or about 1 tablespoon of fine minced ginger. Then next, this is about 6 ounces of baby bok choy that I'm small dicing as well. You might in other instances see the use of filler ingredients at this point to serve this same purpose, including things like cabbage or water chestnut. Personally, I think this is kind of a wasted opportunity to add flavor to our filling though, and I think baby bok choy works perfectly for this purpose. Moving on to our pork next, I'm starting off with my ground pork, about 16 ounces or 1 pounds worth today. As we've discussed in the past, Chinese recipes notoriously exclusively call for the use of ground pork when ground pork is absolutely not that significant or important to the recipe. So at this point, if you'd like, you could also sub in ground turkey, ground chicken, 80-20 beef chuck, or really any fatty ground meat. I'm marinating this today with 4 tablespoons of soy sauce to start, followed by a single tablespoon each of Shaoxing wine, dark soy sauce, and oyster sauce. Rounding this out is 2 tablespoons of bean paste, which is optional, but I also think adds a nice depth of flavor to our filling though, followed finally by half a teaspoon each of white pepper and Chinese five spice. We're giving this all a mix to combine, then setting this aside to marinate for 30 minutes. 
Over on the stove, 30 minutes later, I have my wok heating up as hot as possible, then I'm adding in 4 tablespoons of peanut oil, and as always, long yao for that nice non-stick surface. Then going in here first are my aromatic veggies. Here's my garlic and ginger going in for 15 seconds until nice and fragrant, followed by my ground pork next. I'm switching to an overhand grip on my spatula here so that we may break apart any errant clumps of ground pork left behind. Then next I'm adding in my bok choy and giving this all a toss for another 2 minutes until fragrant and slightly reduced in volume. Finally, I'm pulling this all out of our wok once our ground pork is about 80% cooked through. Keep in mind that we've still got a 15 minute steam coming up, so there's no need for this filling to be fully cooked at this point. Back over on my cutting board, two hours later, we're circling back to our dough next. Now in the bow short, you'll see Auntie rolling her dough out in an old school grandma style by rolling it into a log, then dividing it into equal pieces. In context, this makes a lot of sense since she is, after all, an old school auntie. For the perfectionists out there though, this will almost always give you some unevenly sized bows in your final product since you're essentially estimating how large each piece of dough is. So personally, I like to use an ounce scale for this purpose. I'm looking for 2.5 ounces per bow, which should give us 10 bows altogether, all evenly sized. Then next, you'll also notice in the bow short that Auntie's rolling method is super textbook, which I gotta believe is very intentional. We're starting out by forming our dough into a rough circle with our hands. Then I'm using my rolling pin to roll out just the exterior edges, rotating a quarter turn after each roll. This should leave us with a slightly thicker center here, which will give the bottom of our bow a little bit more weight as it steams. Next up, I'm adding 3 tablespoons of filling, then we're wrapping this with pleats, rotating the bow after each turn, and then twisting it off in the direction of the pleat for that nice swirl at the top of our bow. Finally, I'm repeating this 9 more times, then adding my bows to a bamboo steamer basket with parchment paper lining the bottom. Ideally, if you've got some, cabbage or lettuce is going to be a better and more traditional option, because if it sticks to the bow, you can go ahead and eat it anyway and it'll still be fine. Here I am using parchment paper though because I forgot to buy cabbage, so oh well. Over on the stove, we're finally getting to the trickiest part of our dish today, which is going to be the steaming process. I'm adding my steam baskets on top of a pot of boiling water and then keeping the fire at a medium low simmer, otherwise the flames are going to lick up and set that bamboo basket on fire, which yes, I have absolutely done before. Then next, I'm covering this up and letting it steam for 15 minutes, but upon finishing those 15 minutes, do not open the basket, but instead let that rest for another 5 minutes on top of the pot as the steam dissipates, followed by another 10 minutes on the table to cool. You'll notice in the short, Auntie also serves the bows up with the lid still on. This is to let the dough fully settle before opening the basket. If you open the basket too early, those bows are going to collapse in on themselves, which is no good. So, be patient and be prepared. This steaming process is going to take a full 30 minutes between the steam and the resting time. Finally, once these are all cooled down, I'm removing my parchment paper, then splitting our bows in half for a gratuitous cross section, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so I'll be the first to admit that steamed baozi are challenging to make. I think that this is pretty much always true anytime that we're working with a cooking process as strict as ours was today. Ideally, I would have liked to get a little bit more lift in our bao dough here, but I'm still pretty happy with our final results though. The richer dark soy sauce, oyster sauce, and bean paste elements that we borrowed from our Shan Bing recipe really paid off and give our filling a deep umami quality to go along with our steamed bao dough. Then to pair with this, my personal favorite part about this filling are the 5 spice and baby bok choy elements, which give the bao a really wonderful aromatic quality as well. Finally, the last bit that I'll mention is that I absolutely did not get away with a perfect 10 out of 10 here. At least two of these baos broke open in the steam, so don't be discouraged if that happens in your own attempts, because it's almost inevitable with every batch of baos, unless of course you're an animated Chinese auntie with impossibly perfect bao rolls. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to reproducing foods from TV and film. So definitely check that series out next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice pop-up is back at the Alameda Antiques Fair this weekend, so come by and say hi if you can. More about that at wukancook.com slash eats. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice interneters, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Do you feel the wound falling around you? Baby, do you ever feel the shadow? Do you